This episode is brought to you by Kia's first three-row all-electric SUV. The Kia EV9. With available all-wheel drive and seating for up to seven adults. With a zero to 60 speed that thrills you one minute. And available reclining lounge seats that unwind you the next. Visit kia.com slash EV9 to learn more. Ask your Kia dealer for availability. No system, no matter how advanced, can compensate for all driver error and or driving conditions. Always drive safely. Join me, 48 Hours correspondent Erin Moriarty, on my podcast, My Life of Crime, as I take on true crime investigations like no other. This season, I'm looking into the labyrinth of crime and secrets within families. I'm cutting straight to the evidence and talking to the people directly involved, including investigators and the families of victims. Listen to My Life of Crime with Aaron Moriarty wherever you get your podcasts. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Hello. And hi. Hey. And welcome. <laughs> to hell. To house. Whose house? My house. Hell's house. Hell's house. Um, hi, this LLC. is LLC. Ooh, Bays. Ooh, Bays. That's right. We're your host. I'm Caitlin. And I'm Joshua. And that's Mike. Hey. Mike's in the room. So for five minutes. Does anybody ever talk about why it's a limited liability corporation during these movies? I don't think it's no. been mentioned. I don't think it age. has either. Mm-mm. Yeah. I think we should have. Maybe it's because him and Mac went into business together. Yeah. So I think we should have a LLC. prequel that is just about forming an LLC. <laughs> That's a horror movie in itself. It That's right. I just did it. Did yeah. you? Yeah. For what? For your clothes thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. It's a lot. Is, is Sloppy still around? Yeah. Okay. So both. Both. But is, Sloppy Seconds is a sole proprietorship. Oh. So, uh, mm-hmm. Okay. So I different. All That's the one you're going to get fleeced on then, right? Yeah. All the bill collectors are going to come to that one. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> LLC, you can just maintain here. And then when you move, you're just like, oh, I don't know. It's a place in Waco. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Sole proprietorship's a lot more responsibility yeah. on yeah. your shoulders. No kidding. Yeah. So what are, we, what are we talking about? Uh, the movie itself. Which one? Hell, Hell House, House 3. Three. Lake of Fire. Lake of Fire. Mm-hmm. Lake of Fire. Lando Lakes. Lando yeah. Lake, Lake of Fire. It's yeah. kind of the same thing. It's just a tub of butter. That's it. Um, yeah. We're is gonna... Lando Lakes real butter? I don't think it is. Um, no. I think it's just grease. It I think it's hardened grease. It's uh, artificially. Don't come at us, Lando Lakes. It's vegan. Is it? Is no. It vegan? no. But they make. No, if that's country crop vegan? that makes vegan. <laughs> what is vegan butter? Because how is it butter? It's just butter grease, is milk. Man. It's just grease. I don't know. I used it on my quesadilla today, though, that I made. It's mostly leftover uh, car oil. Ah, uh, that makes yeah. sense. They recycle it, turn it yellow, mm. put it in a tub. That's what Priuses are for. That's right. Yeah, dye number yellow. Priuses. That's why I dye egg. them? Dye yellow drive them. Yeah. It's margarine, I'm sure, right? Yeah. Because margarine's that that weird term they use for things that aren't really butter, but they think they're butter. Yes, it's just oil. Yeah. Speaking of that, Hell House 3. Yeah. Uh, Lake of Fire. So <clears throat> the reason you wanted me to come on this one mm-hmm. was so that I could talk about how people don't like the third one. Yeah. Now, when I say I'm people. I'm curious. Yeah. I, I want to know. When I say people, I mean Reddit folks. I so want to know why know they're, they're wrong. I don't know that they're actual people. but True that. Um, so, for instance, I, I looked up a thing on Reddit. Uh, this guy, uh, Tyler Amel467 says, this was 57 days ago too, by the way. So so this is recent. recent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the first Hell House and thought that the second one was passable as an enjoyable follow-up. I think he's wrong there. I thought the second one was good. I liked it as well. Uh, I finally got around to watching part three this weekend and I cannot believe the drop in quality. (laughs) This was maybe the worst acting, writing, and effects I've seen in a reasonably well-recognized franchise. I did honestly enjoy myself, but I never understand those kind of things. I really liked it, but I hate it. It's yeah. like um, when people say they didn't like their food, but they ate it all. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I want that yeah. taken off my bill. I ate it all. 
Um, I did honestly enjoy myself, but mostly because of how bad it was. What happened here? Did they just have absolutely no budget whatsoever? Yeah. Well, yeah, it's an independent movie. I felt like it was way too ambitious for how limited the first two movies were in their scope. I'd love to hear some others' thoughts. So, What does he mean, how limited, limited the others two were? Yeah, I don't really understand what that means because all of these movies set up that world, you mm-hmm. know, that we talked about. Um, so this person responded and said, Baker Yeast, by the way, responded and said, <laughs> uh, ha- <laughs> that always... Um, flies in the face of the credibility for me. Your, your, your name, username. your tag name. Yeah. 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 Baker Yeast says, had some, had same thoughts. First two movies were good just because of good scares and overall creepiness, which that's not spelled correctly. Sometimes you need <laughs> movies like that. Period. It's not a sentence. In third, they tried to, in third, oh, in third movie, I guess he said, they tried to explain the story and what happened to the characters without any scares. The story and characters weren't interesting at any point of first two movies. Again, with the with the grammar, maybe they should read it out loud with, without s- themselves. <laughs> well, they don't have anybody in the basement with them to read it to. Yeah, without scares, there was no point for this movie. Story was stupid and acting was bad. Was oh. that you or me? Sorry, that was That's, me. That was Tully. That was a That's bodily. Totally right that was a bodily yeah. reaction to that review. Um, I it made my acid reflex act up. So uh, last one I'll read. Yeah. Uh, this uh, Mr. White 42216, so big Breaking Bad fan, I'm sure. Mm. Uh, I personally found part three to be a vast improvement over two. Oh. Neither lives up to the first film. <laughs> it's like, yay, you suck. Mm-hmm. Uh, neither lives up to the first film, but at least part three kind of feels similar. Part two lost me with that awful, drawn out conversation with Andrew Tully. Uh, it's like this isn't even yeah. found footage. I, I agree, I mean, but at some point you got to get out of the found footage thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in their universe anymore. This is literally proof in the paranormal that the entire world in their universe can view. The third movie ends crazy, but I found it more like the first with creepy stuff going on in the background more often and not blatantly over the top crap. Plus, the acting in part two was easily the worst in the trilogy by far. Okay, uh-huh. so, what kind of review is that? It was like it's I love it, good, but I hate it. But I love it. But I, I love hate it. it. I hate it. I love it. I hate it. Please, please kill me. Yeah. Um, so I thought three was the one where they start to actually build the world. Right. Yeah. Because one was, let's say they never made anything, but one, it's still a good standalone found footage first try. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. One would stand alone really yeah. well. Two takes what you take some of what you know from the first one and just, you know, kind of builds on it elaborates right? and it yeah. sets some Easter eggs up for like we talked about it mm-hmm. ends up setting up some Easter eggs and answers like, some of the questions from the first movie. Yes. Yeah. And yes. it sets Absolutely. up three and four. Absolutely. So Baker Yeast, um for three, I thought I, I know what they're talking about because when Tully's there and all that stuff, it does not feel like a found footage movie anymore. Right. Yeah. This is the one where he's banging on the table and the yeah. And, yeah. and the cloak guys are coming out of the big hole. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, I, I do understand what they're saying. But again, I think <clears throat> broaden your scope a little bit, you know, because for Abaddon Eyes, the podcast that you guys are executive producing, that's basically a spinoff of this show. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, when you go back and you tell the story of Tully and these guys uh, at the fair, there's no way that can be found footage. Yeah, Yeah. because it happened a long time ago. Yeah. You know, I mean, unless it's, you know, found drawings or something. But Mm -hmm. yeah, I I just just (laughs) found cave paintings. (laughs) I love that. Love that genre. Um, So anyway, that's my take on it. I I, I just felt like it it was a world builder, you know, and that it really increased. And I thought three had some pretty decent scares in it. Like, yeah, I mean, it still was the clown and stuff, but there was. Four is my favorite just because, and maybe it's because it's the newest one. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But I love the fact that, again, like they've gone to another planet, you know, basically. They're spreading the story out. Yeah. yeah. I like that part of it because now it gives them the freedom to kind of spread out and do other things. But I think Casey and I had that same talk, you know, five and going forward, you're probably going to need to make an actual movie. Yeah. You know, not just found footage stuff. Yeah. But that's and, fine. And when hopefully, like, uh, Casey was even 
saying that hopefully some, you know, more money can come into flux as well and help build those to be better, or bigger projects. Um, well, I mean, if it's another Shutter exclusive or whatever, mm -hmm. obviously Shutter's throwing some cash at them because yeah. the fourth one, you can tell, mm -hmm. it took yeah. a lot more money to make that one. Which is good, which is great. Yeah. Um, and I think, like you said, um, to Baker Yeast um, about the <laughs> scope, like I think that there has to be a, also a bigger picture kind of understanding of like that these movies, um, they are building a bigger universe. Yeah. And so like even too, like I, I would say even too is like you couldn't watch that necessarily standalone because it's building off of everything that we learned on the first one and then pushing the narrative and the story even further for what we would go into into the third one. Like how we have in the second one that all of this was, you know, put together by Russell Wynn, but we never even see mm -hmm. Russell Wynn in the mm -hmm. second one. But yet he is our main guy in the third one. Yeah. yeah. And I love how they did that. And it's kind of the same thing what they did with Mitchell from the first one and going into the second one. Yeah. And yeah. I really love that too, because it's like they he keeps having these threads that go throughout the movies. Um and regardless of um like the the which we call the budget, because if anything, it's even more commendable how much story and how much mm -hmm. progress he's able to get through with such a limited budget. I agree. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. you make a movie, Baker Yeast. That's what I'm saying. I want to yeah. see the Baker Yeast movie. That's well, like every time someone comes into my store and complains about prices, and I'm like, do you want to run a business? That's it. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Like, this is not a garage sale. Yeah. You yeah. try to yeah. run a pri business and then yeah. come talk to me about very what hard. your prices yeah. are. And you can charge your prices. But yeah. like, let, let's let's keep it in the in the movie world. Go back and watch the original Star Wars. It's not the best made movie in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, two improves on it uh, because two is my favorite. Empire Strikes Back is my favorite of all of them. But... Without the first one, you wouldn't have two. And without two, and you couldn't just go in and watch two and not know what came from the first one mm -hmm. and things like that. So, I mean, this is a tried and true tradition in making trilogies or, or universes or whatever. You got to make the first one. You got to make the second one. You got to keep telling the story. Yeah. It's like a cake, you know? It's you exactly keep it. adding the layers. Yeah. Yeah. Or an onion. An as onion. Or an say. onion. Mm -hmm. That's right. World mm -hmm. is an onion. Yeah. It is. Okay. So, Thanks, I'm going to check out. Yeah. And now, a word from our sponsors. Um, and so just like that, I think it'd be great to segue into our opening of the film. Yes, um, we're talking about, if you haven't garnered, I don't think we did. We officially say Hell House yeah. Three: Lake of yeah. Fire. Okay, yeah. uh -huh. twenty nineteen is when this film came out. Also directed and written by Stephen Cognetti. Yes. Um and yeah, it's friend of the podcast. Friend of the podcast. Um and yeah, it, <laughs> we talked to him once. <laughs> he probably <laughs> immediately forgot who we are. Like, do not know these. No, people. he probably remembers me as that one bitch who interviewed him and hadn't watched the fourth film. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I doubt, but I mean, I feel like that's really understandable, though. It had just came out. It's not like this is like it. it and it's I'm a busy been, life. been out. You are, and you own like five businesses, and you run a podcast. Um, busy, and busy. So we open up with um, some information on our, of course, beloved Abaddon Hotel. Um, it was finally going to be condemned and burned down, and like you know. Yeah. It was set to be demolished. Demolished. But it that's was the word. purchased. It was purchased by Russell Wynn, who is this um it's basically like a an Elon Musk type of guy, yeah. I guess. Or a Jeff oh. Bezos. It's supposed to be like a really rich dude. Rich entrepreneur mm -hmm. type. Yeah. Who is into Theater. Yeah, very much so. And um, he and is, nine years have passed since the original Hell oh, House yeah. crew disappeared. It's now. been nine years. Um and it is a year after what happened prior with um the morning mysteries and Crew. the um insider investigation mystery people yeah. um and he is the richest man in the country i also they did say that so yeah he's the richest man in the country not even just a rich man but the richest man and he like you said is in theater he's producing a show um has produced a show called insomnia um and it's really popular it's really like you know, lucrative or whatever. And he has decided that he's going to take the show and take it to the Abaddon Hotel. Um, so 
that's pretty much where we kind of enter in on this third chapter of the franchise. Um, and the whole, it says we, with our little typeface and everything we mm. get, it says the following, following documentary is trying to retrace the events that happened on October 1st, 2018. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of setting all of it. Eventually later on, we get like the morning mysteries footage from September 13th to August 2nd, um, 2018. But mm -hmm. everything happened October 1st this time. Yeah. It would have been kind of fun had it happened again on October, October 8th. 8th. Yeah. Yeah. But that's old news. <clears throat> it is. We're switching things up. Yeah. With our third film. Um, and we have it going into... Um, Oh, this is where we learned that uh, Vanessa Shepard is taking over from Susie McCombs. Yes. Um, because something happened to Susie McCombs. Did we ever get a mention of what happened to Susie McCombs? No, I think she just like retired right? or something. She just yeah. went over time. She was young. Yeah. Um, retired from the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She just left. Um, so now it's up to Vanessa Shepard. To... Then we get to see mm -hmm. Robert Lyons again, the author of Abaddon Tapes. Yes, the beard dude. Beard That's what dude, I like to yeah, call him. From beard the first guy. film. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're asked, um, he's giving more of his, you know, what's the vibe? What's the word I'm trying to look for? Like, I, I think Mike mentioned it on the last episode or on the episode we were talking to him about how Mike, how he was, um, really like giving very, like, I forgot what he said. It's like, well, if you believe that would happen or something like that, he's oh, very yeah. ominous and very, um, yeah, funny. He's just funny. Um, he but and then he's kind of explaining mm -hmm. what happened at insomnia but without really explaining explaining it yeah yeah um and so we then i guess cut to um them vanessa shepherd and her team meeting the cast right yes mm -hmm. yeah we open with gregory who plays faust yeah um and they're basically kind asking of them questions about the production yeah and then what they like about the abaddon hotel if they like anything about it gregory's kind of like uh what no, I don't like anything about this hotel. This place fucking mm -hmm. sucks. It's worse than high school theater. Yeah. Kind of thing. But Wynn is playing us pretty well. Yeah. So that's kind of our first mention. Stick around. And that's that gets brought up a lot of times throughout the whole film um, with our cast members. Um, they also get asked if they aren't disturbed about what has happened here prior in the Abaddon Hotel. Um, and a lot of these cast members, like, you don't have really the biggest, the slightest clue of what has happened here. And most of them haven't even seen the documentary of yeah. like all the footage that has basically been taken here at the hotel. Except for Max. Yeah. Because Max, who plays Mephistopheles, is like, seen it. I own, own it. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's definitely seen all of it. And he's like kind of in on the lore and stuff behind it he's like I mean, he's really only... excited about like being at the bar mm -hmm. and like saying like you know the last time people were here having drinks was when the hell house crew nine years ago was blah 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 yeah and all that stuff so max is pretty in on it and you can tell he kind of believes it but also doesn't to a point that he's still there it's like he he definitely feeds on and loves like i feel like the dramatics of it. Like, I feel like he definitely doesn't feel like it's real, but he definitely feeds on, like, the stan culture of it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, he's a fangirl, but he yeah. also doesn't believe, like, he thinks it's all a hoax, I think, still. And, like, he loves that. Like, he's in on it. Like, he's in on the joke, so that's why he hypes it up more, I guess. I don't yeah. know. Um, but... There are some moments in the film where he seems pretty serious about it, though. Mm -hmm. Like, when Gregory asks, like, what do we do if we catch a ghost on camera? And Max is like, good question. <laughs> like and it seems like he's legit like serious mm -hmm. like well that is a good question like why the like, fuck is everyone else laughing he's kind of like the second coming of Paul yeah if that makes sense he almost looked similar to a Paul too. too yeah um, he's that got that light hearted energy to him Paul is Jesus now he is um, and we are you know getting all these separate and individual cast crew little member um, we meet Jane interviews. Jane um, you already mentioned Greg and Paul, not Paul, Max. Max. Um, I think that's it so yeah, far, right? Yeah, that's really... On the, the cast part. Yeah. Um, and then we end up, I think this is where they start to set up the morning mysteries. Yeah, and well... Why they're filming. One point to Max is like, he does say, to go back to a little bit to what mm -hmm. we were talking about a second ago, 
Max does say. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, don't, I don't normally interrupt these things. Yeah. <laughs> but we just got uh, confirmation that Tully's going to do an interview. Ah! Yeah. Whoa. So that's Andrew Tully. That's awesome. That's so cool. Neat. Literally. Um, okay. We're going to get breaking the news. Inter- breaking news. Beep, 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 beep. This is an exclusive. Yeah. We're going to have Andrew Tully um, on and to be interviewed that's pretty cool Ew, i wonder if his voice actually sounds like that or if he hammed it up or like put on a little like inflection like a little, yeah for it that's gonna be pretty cool it's gonna be pretty creepy if he sounds like the exact same yeah that is gonna be kind of <laughs> creepy oh it's kind of it kind of reminds me of what if uh, tully isn't even an actor barbarian and oh, the yeah. guy whenever the kids saw him in the theater who played the old man mm, barbarian old man the old man who was like locking all the girls up in the basement yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. Oh, and whenever his actor yeah, 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 went yeah. to go see the, the movie, movie and, and people were like, <gasps> "Why is he scared here? of him?" Yeah. yeah, yeah, I would be a little scared of Tully. It's true. Um, and so, well, that's awesome. Um, um you oh, said you were talking about Max. Yes, Maximo. Max was basically saying they were like, "Well, do you like, and you're okay with being in here still?" And he's like, "Well, let me just say, I know where all the exits that's are true. in the building." Yeah. And but then it's also like, well, it's not really that helpful, buddy. Yeah, because everybody knows where the exits are and they can never get out of them. Yeah, they shut and they lock. They lock them out yeah. or lock them in rather. Mm-hmm. Um, but yes, then we're with the morning mysteries people. So we're with Vanessa and then also Sam, who's yes. the morning mystery producer. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're kind of talking a little bit more on like the production and um on um Russell Wynn and how he told them that he wanted them to film everything, right? Yeah. Mhm. And for him, I love how he was like that should have been a red flag. Yeah, um, he gave us like no bars, mm-hmm. like barrings like you can just do whatever Which is you want. Highly unusual for people to usually be like that and stuff. Um Yeah. Mhm. Mm-hmm. It it is pretty Pretty sketchy. Yeah. But then we get the morning mysteries footage, September 13th through October 2nd, like 2018, like I mm-hmm. mentioned earlier. Um, also, Russell Wynn looks like uh, Andrew's, one of Andrew's best friends, Rob. Oh, really? Yeah. Shout out, Rob. Shout out, Rob. Maybe he's an angel. Maybe. Um, Rob backwards is Boar. Boar. <laughs> <laughs> That's an angel name if I've ever heard one. It um, probably is. And so, um, but yeah, Russell, and he has this, um, what's it called, scar kind of going, gash, line thing going through the middle of his eye. Yeah. And face. Whole Rob situation. doesn't have that, but. Gotcha. Um, but yes, our, our Russell does. And we're also getting, we're getting a little background on him. On um, basically, um, you know, he's a, you know, the millionaire. Um he bought Insomnia, or not Insomnia, but the Abaddon Hotel and wants to use it for the Insomnia um, production and all that, I think. But this is where he's talking to, or no, this is where, what's his face? John? Is his name John? Who's, oh, he does look like him. They look Wait, kinda that similar. one, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, not the. Yeah, I was like, okay, with him. the beard guy. Yeah, that does look like him, actually. Looks, they're like the same height, too, and they have like kind of the same gait with mm. how they walk and stuff. Yeah. And so. That I was just like the whole time I was like, that looks like that John. looks like, like Rob. That's funny. Like he's got crazy eyes in this photo. Oh, he does. They're scary. That's funny. <laughs> he's not normally crazy eyed. Aw, that's fun. Um, shout out to Boar. Um, Boar. And so, um, this is where Vanessa is now. She's shown up to the Abaddon Hotel, right? She's there in front of it, and she's getting. Uh, she's talking to what's his face. Um, Jeff. Jeff. I was I called him John for some reason. Jeff. Yes. Um, Jeff. And he's basically. I love how he's like he like believes it, but he doesn't believe it at the same time throughout his whole character. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, it's just like in the way that he like talks about things and like the way he's like so like yeah no it's fine we're all in here like it's gonna be it's okay like nonchalant yeah yeah but then like other times he's very cryptic or like. I don't know. Like he like like the Abaddon eyes. Yeah, exactly. When he says I guess. That. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, who well, if you don't believe in it, then why would you believe in that? You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But um Vanessa also kind of we're getting like that she didn't want to go in, kind of Molly vibes. Um she yeah. was a bit apprehensive, I guess. She, she was like, like stalling. 
Yeah, whenever Jeff goes to go in, she stands back a bit and mm-hmm. he's like, are you scared to go in? And she's like, aren't you? Mm-hmm. And then whenever they get to the front door, passing Hector on the way, hi, Hector. Um, shout out, Hector. Shout out, Hector. Mm-hmm. They um, Also note, this is happening on September 16th, right? And yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, that's my sister's birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah, And that's a few months before your birthday and Andrew's birthday. It is. Yeah. All on the 16th. Mm-hmm. Um. It's but, also Mexican National Independence Day, oh, September sixteenth. It, it is, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that is exciting. Um, but yes, this is 15, and it's fifteen days before the show time, I believe. Yes, 15, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, but once she gets to the front door and stuff too, she even like won't go in, mm-hmm, and he's mm-hmm. just like, "Come on, it's just wooden nails," like I yeah. said, and, and then it's like it's fine, you can go in. And then she points out, and he points out that like, um, there's Hell House LLC property, like shit, um. That was left there that they're kind of just leaving out kind of look like to, like looks like ruins on the front of it. Yeah, we I get guess the sign, the which the sign is moved all over this building yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> in the second film. It was out back and the entrance whenever they came in the yeah. um, insider crew, that black Jessica's door crew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it was out back there. And then now it was out front. And mm-hmm. then whenever Diane Graves and them got there, it was with the most likely place that it would be. It was down at the base of like the balcony, kind of near the um, underneath the balcony, mm-hmm. which it was it was Hung. on the side. Yeah. We're on the balcony, off the balcony, like so, where the old Abaddon Hotel sign was. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And so that made the most sense for it to be there. But, yeah, someone's picking it up and moving it. Mm-hmm. All over the place, or the ghost star. It's the Abaddon itself, um, and so um, <clears throat> she. Um, well, what happens? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Whenever she's also she's talking to Jeff, and whenever she does come in, um, she asks him another question or something like that. Um, and I think it's right before he like it, it segues to a different part, or she's talking to someone else because he's like she asks him like, "Are you gonna?" Are you excited to be here or stay here or something like that? And he she was, asked, can we get an interview? Like, can are we good to interview everyone, including you? And he says, like, I'll give you a statement right now. Oh, yeah. He's like, I can't wait to get the hell back to New York. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so I was like that. I, I was like, what? Like, what? If you don't think it's dangerous, then why would you? Say something like that. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways. I mean, also, probably if you're used to big city life, then living out there is probably boring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't I have that. a bagel at fingertips <laughs> length. A bagel. Have you, have you had a bagel yet? I haven't had the bagel yet. God damn it, Josh. Right. But I just don't want to go. We're going to fly you to New York. I was like, I don't want to go bagel. like, like, where do you get a bagel? Like, I'm not going to go to HEB and like buy bread and like make a bit because I wouldn't even know what I'm well, doing. I wouldn't even know how to pre- HEB. I don't know how to prepare it right. You know what I mean? Like, you I want to, I want to go somewhere and have a bagel prepared for me. You can go to Panera. They have bagels? Yeah. Like prepared bagels? Mm-hmm. They'll toast them and put cream cheese on it for you. I can say, I want that bagel toasted with cream cheese, please. Yeah. And then they'll ask you what cream cheese, because they have different cream cheese oh, flavors. The flavors. They've got like a honey, walnut, almond, not almond, Which honey, one? walnut. They've got like a chive one, I think. They've got one. Tastes like onions? Yeah. Oh. It's good on like the sesame bagel oh. or the Asiago like cheese thing. one. Yeah. Um, they've got just regular cream cheese. I think they got fat-free cream cheese. What do you get? What's your pairing? I really like the chocolate chip bagel with just regular cream cheese. Okay. And or the Asiago cheese bagel with, again, regular cream cheese. I don't know if they actually have a chive one. Okay. They do have some sort of savory one, I think. Mm. Okay. I like chives, though, so I'd probably get the chive. I'm I'm intrigued now. I want my bagel. All right. Bagel for Christmas. Give me a bagel for Christmas. Oh, okay. I will. <laughs> Just wrap it up. With cream cheese on it already, please. It'll be. I can unwrap it and it has cream cheese on it. And you can eat That's it perfect. right away. Mm-hmm. Like a little sandwich. Um, And so we have uh them going to, uh, uh, she's talking about the wine. They're talking about, um. I have in my notes for some reason talking about wine. Yeah, they're talking about how he's replaced all of the wine bottles with his own signature wine. Oh, that's right. Um, blend the mm-hmm. win the wine. Win wine. Mm-hmm. Win wine. Um, wine. 
And so it's it's just there. It's a quick and they're joking about like how many cases can you fit back in your car on the way home? Mm-hmm. Like you got room for 17, There's 20 cases. So We're not more. hauling them back all, all, all ourselves. So yeah. you can just take whatever the hell you can fit in your van because mm-hmm. she was like, ooh. And then he was like, take them, please. <laughs> <laughs> we have too many. Um, and then the power goes out. Yep. Power mm-hmm. goes out. And then he's like, no worries it has been a little glitchy lately yeah. and it'll be back on in about 10 seconds or so and which it does yeah it comes back on and everyone just all like well this is normal yeah but it's so creepy mm-hmm. <laughs> but then um it's, this is whenever i think we're supposed to go to the basement right we're heading down to the basement but yeah. jeff doesn't want to go to the basement yeah jeff doesn't want to go to the basement because that's where russell is with yeah. harvey that's right and yeah. um rv shout out to harvey yeah um, harvey's it's pretty funny I love his, if you can make me a size two again line that he <laughs> delivers right here. Yeah, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, Jeff is like, what do you need? And he's like, I need you to make me a size two again. <laughs> but if you can't do that, I guess. Um, he yeah. is funny. Harvey is very funny, very sassy. Um, and so we have, I think this is the same part, too, where they're on their way to the, the, get to the basement area. Yeah, uh, he's going to go drop her off. heaven. Yeah, heaven, which Jeff is like, you know, this is pretty literal the way Jeff ha- uh, Russell has it. But this is what he wanted. Um, and it's all white. Very white. Um, just sheets everywhere. These, like, mannequins covered in, like, white sheets that are supposed to be angels. Um, and that's whenever she, um, Vanessa, kind of stops everything and is like, wait, I thought I, I thought I saw something. And then that's whenever um, Jeff is like, aha, Abaddon eyes. Like, yeah. Yeah, everybody, it happens to everybody. It's basically, here. like, when you see stuff out of the corner of your eyes or you feel like someone's watching you, we call that the Abaddon eyes. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Abaddon eyes podcast abaddon eyes out everywhere on to be determined insert date here. yes um, <laughs> we are also now meeting russell in the basement um and russell kind of off the bat gives like you know smug entrepreneur ish in a way yeah like um, he's not necessarily outright mean, but he's also kind of gives a little dick vibes. Yeah, when he was like, oh, too bad. I really liked Susie. Yeah. And it was like, okay, well, I'm the new Susie bitch. So yeah. 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 What, what you mean? Yeah. It, also, it gives like time and place. It gives like read the room. It gives like social awareness wasn't yeah. always like there sometimes in the way that he said things. It just kind of seemed like a bit rude, I guess. Um, and that's whenever, yeah, like you said, he said that she's talking to him. They're going over on like, you know, what what she what basically why she's there and what, why he wants her to film, essentially. Um, and then um, he starts to take her to the cast, right, and crew, and wants yeah. to introduce her to everybody. We're going to meet all the actors, um, mm-hmm. which we're meeting in the dining room area now. Yeah. And this is where Gregory happen- happens to ask, what happens if we catch a ghost on camera? Mm-hmm. And Max was being supportive and I stuff and was like, that's a really good question. And everyone else is, like, laughing and yeah. stuff. And I was like, I was with Max. I was like, that is a good question. What What do we do? What do we do if we catch this ghost on camera? What can you do? That's the question. Cry. What can? That sun is so bright. You need me to close the blinds? No, it's okay. There's none there. Oh. Or maybe they are, but they're just like... JK. Yeah. I don't know. But um, we have uh, them all meeting and talking and um, like kind of like... What's the word? Um, they're definitely taunting. It's not. It's a regular taunting because of his like theatrical. What is it? He was in a play Shakespeare with Shakespeare in the Park. Yeah, Amy McAdams. Amy Adams. Amy Adams. Yeah, <laughs> Amy Adams. Got it. And then um, he was tree number three. Apparently, they were like, yeah, there were two trees that were better, better, better the trees better than, you. than you. Yeah. Um, and that's whenever we are. Um, after that, we cut to. <sighs> Going over some footage or something because we yeah. caught something on the footage. We're with um, Vanessa and she's basically oh, yeah. telling us that Hell House was not the first incident, that yeah. there was a Billy Braddock's thing and an incident at the county fair mm-hmm. that happened over the in land. 2002. Yeah. I liked how this is where we get that shot of the carnival, right? Over mm-hmm. here. I thought that was pretty cool. It's aerial, like fake carnival going on. Yeah. Like a little drone shot. Yeah. Kind of thing. It was fun. I was like, did they actually like, Set up a carnival and film that? Or, like, did they just go... F- Maybe, hopefully, they just happened upon a carnival, and then we're like, yeah, let's get this drone. Let's fucking film this shit. <laughs> yeah. This will come in handy. Instead of setting up a whole carnival yeah. for one shot. 
for that was like two seconds of a movie. That's wild. That would be. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and so yeah, there. Um, uh, I think at this point, um, for some reason, I'm like, oh, OMG, what was that? They, they, for some reason, they catch something on the footage, yeah. and they're going up to the meeting to have a had a, a Louis, going, had yeah, a meeting. Louis came up and was like, hey, you know when you thought you saw something? I think the camera actually caught something. Mm-hmm. And she was like, do I want to see this? Ha, 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 That's ha. right. And he was like, and no. She was, he was like, yeah, no. And so... <laughs> Um, but she watches it anyways, and there's like something. It almost looks like one of the angels, yeah. standing in the corner. But it's very like almost faded. It's gradient, you know. You can barely tell and make it out. Yeah, um, yeah. and then it zooms in on it for you, mm-hmm. which was fun. Yeah, I liked that. It's kind of um, like how they did it in the second one. Yeah, yeah. And then, um, then that's when we're having a meeting in the attic. Um, and this oh, is, and they scare Jane with the clown. That's true. Oh, the boys do. Yeah. yeah. So um, we already know that they're playing tricks on one another. That's setting up a big part of the movie. For them to gaslight <laughs> the shit out of the crew. Um, yeah. But yeah, they're, the boys play a trick on Jane with the middle clown. So not, not our big scary main clown, but the middle one that's got the weird mouth its mouth is weird. Right? Yeah, it's more colorful. It's the colorful clown. And it's That's like, what I call it. It's the colorful it's got clown. Got like scary teeth. And then the black and white clown. And then there's the other clown. Yeah, the other clown. No one ever talks about the Poor other clown. Other clown. Yeah, it's the middle child, I guess. It didn't get kissed. Or the, it didn't get nothing. It's the Michelle of the Destiny Child. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean. And then obviously we know who the Beyonce is. Yeah. Yeah. It's Hill House clown. Which is what's his name? We need to give him a name. I don't know. The, there was no, I know, yeah. We follow Hell House Clown, speaking of, right there. Aw, there he is. It's the official uh, unknown biography. I don't know what his name is. Hmm. Maybe the fans can come up with a name. Kind of like how um, Pinhead wasn't really Pinhead. But the, oh, look, but I found a not private Stephen Cognetti Oh, account. did you? That's cool. I followed him. I wonder how I found the one that I found. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> Maybe it's not even really him. Um, and so we end up um after that having this meeting in the attic where I just know that there's blood on the table because apparently we didn't get a new table or anything. This is still the table that um some bloat is on. Um and that's whenever we are um, having a conversation with Jeff because he's talking about how the banks are calling and he's like, why is all of your, why are all of your banks calling? Like, like there's a problem. Yeah, he's like, um, I have one bank and if they called, I'd be worried. Yeah, because Russell is obviously, he's just like, I don't care, whatever, we'll, um, you know. It's fine. It's fine. Um, I'll deal with that later. Um, and then um, Harvey's up here and he's talking to them too and he's being sassy and funny. Um, and I don't remember and what the- Isabel is asking. He, Harvey's asking on Isabel's yeah. behalf if she leaves, will she still get her pay? That's right. Which is kind of setting it up later for her to leave. Mm-hmm. Um, and even after being offered double pay, as we see yeah. later, what happened to her makes her not stay. Um, but, but then we cut to the priest. Yeah, Father Paulus. Mm-hmm. And they're basically talking about how the gate is open again, or like how mm-hmm. that est porta, es it, porta aperta, aperta like porta means that mm-hmm. the gate is open or the we door is that open. Up. Es aperta porta. Yeah. I think. Aperta porta. Yeah. Aperta porta. Yeah. Aperta porta. Yeah. Yeah. It's Latin. Latin. It gets me confused because it sounds almost like Spanish, but it's not. It yeah. would be like puerta abierta. So that's why I'm getting confused. Yeah. Puerta, la puerta abierta. That's the doors open. Oh. Yeah. So it's almost it's a puerta. It's similar. I, I can yeah. hear the. I'm I like, my it. mind is like, yeah. Uh-huh. I can't say it, though. I'm not but the right, the right way is at porta. Oh, Lord. Aperta. Aperta porta. porta. Aperta porta. And then it, aperta porta porta abierta. Yeah. See. It's a tongue twister. Yeah. And so we, and then I think what he, um, yeah, he's telling her how the gate is open. Um, and then he's talking about how um, 
we, why do I have we are the servants of snakes? Um, written oh, in the I thing think it of the snake. I think yeah. it flashed back to Tully. That's right. And the second one saying we are the servants of snake mm-hmm. of the snake of the or snake. something. <gasps> Valak. It is very Valak. The profane, the defiler, the marquee of snakes. Yeah. What if plot twist? This is part of the Conjuring universe. That'd be sick. Or like not necessarily a part of it, but like a collaboration, like a uh, offshoot. Universes collide. Alter parallel. Yeah, parallel universes. Um, And so we have them um, somewhere in a parallel universe. Multiple things of us are happening in multiple parallel universes. That's crazy. That is wild. Yeah, I try not to think about that. It's gonna hurt my brain. Freaks okay. Me um. So this. So we then get uh, Russell talking to Vanessa about um ticket prices and stuff. Um, I believe. Oh, we're and back while the... we're talking with Father Paulus, sorry, the oh. piano ditty starts playing. Oh yeah, that's right. We get. I think this is the first time that we hear time it we hear in it this in this film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yes, we're walking with Russell on the old county fairgrounds mm-hmm. now, and they're talking about how they lowered ticket prices 30 um, percent yeah. to get more people in there, even though Russell was like, I think people will pay whatever I ask them to and they'll get out here. Yeah. And Vanessa's like, yeah, me too, kind of thing. But mm-hmm. Jeff was like, no, we need to ensure more people get here. So they lowered ticket prices. Yeah. Um. But yeah, they're walking along together. Yeah, and she's kind of talking to him, asking questions. Um, and is this? It, she finds the planchet after they talk, right? Yeah, okay. because they're walking together. Basically, they're talking about God. Yeah, and um, whether or not it's because like, she mentions the word. She's like, "Why something about this God forsaken place?" Yeah, and he's like, "God forsaken. Why would you say it like Why that? Why would you say that?" Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she was like, well, does he was like, do you mean that literally? And she was like, does anyone ever mean it literally? <laughs> yeah. And she was like, I don't even believe in God. And he was like, I used to not. Yeah. And then, and then she was like, don't tell me you're born again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I, was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, girl. A, she's savage. For real. Um, Some people are. And that's OK. It is OK. Some people can be wrong. That's all. I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, but yeah, we have them talking about it. And it's kind of funny because it's not funny, but it, it it is also kind of setting up where kind of the rest of the film is going because it's very um, and also like it's ironic because the play that he's putting on in Sonia is about Faust, which is about basically, you know, the heaven and hell. Mm-hmm. And, and that, you know, that thing that we all go through on a daily basis, I feel like, of where we have to choose, like, our best self or our worst self, you know? And, yeah. And bargaining with the devil on your shoulder and the angel on your other shoulder. Mm-hmm. Exactly. But then... Russell gets called in due to wardrobe malfunctions yeah. happening. Mm-hmm. And uh, Harvey's like, I need you in here, stat. Yeah. And so he walks off. And then this is where she finds Brock's planchette yeah. out in the middle of this cornfield looking area. Um, I wonder how it got out there. Yeah, me too. Probably something to do with like the spirits or the house. Or maybe it's Brock's spirit itself left it out there. Yeah. For other people to find it. I love how she just yeah. <laughs> tosses Whatever. it away. <laughs> And it um, doesn't matter. Yeah. This is weird. Oh, let me throw it away. I would have been like, this is cool. Let me keep this. I That's think the hoarder. In was me. This, this, and this was also, I think, we got to mention uh, from her to Russell. She was also kind of mentioning that, like, she was well, not admiring, but like, um, bring, this is where we get real rules brought up. But she was like, oh, yeah, nobody's allowed to be in there after nine or something like that. Or Oh, yeah, I think so. Because uh-huh, he's kind of there. It's not it's like subtly brought up a little bit. How like nobody's supposed to be in there after I'm sorry, nine. I thought you said subtly. No, su- <laughs> subtly. Yeah, my bad. Um, I probably did subtly say slutily. that. Um, and nobody's supposed to be in there after dark. And he kind of has these rules set up in order to keep people protected. Um in essence, from the things and the stuff that's in the hotel. Because then we cut to, after they're having, you know, she finds a planchette in the conversation, we cut to um, the cast rehearsing for the show and discussing Faust and discussing, like, you know, I think, uh, what's her name? Jane is the one, like, mid-scene where she's like, wait, I don't get it. Like, what is his percept? What is the... What know? exactly are his doubts? And do I share these doubts yeah. with Faust? She's, she's getting really into her character. Yeah. Um, But... After this, it's because um, 
we get the bonfire happening. And this is where it really comes into play where it's like, oh, we're not supposed to be in the building after hours because even before um, like the producers leave, Jeff, I think, is the one that is like, y'all remember the rules or something like that. Like Everyone least- back in by nine o'clock. Or mm-hmm. whatever, sharp. We're, we're going to go check rooms at the hotel and to make stuff sure that like nobody that. is still out there on the grounds after yeah. dark. Yeah. And basically, <clears throat> we just have the cast drinking around and daring one another to go into the basement and back, go into the basement and then come back basically for free drinks. Yeah. And that was it. And That's I'm it. like, no cash, no nothing. Or well, at first, wasn't it 500 or something like that or something? Yeah, but then it got down to just like a, a beer. And then it got down to just Dane, Jane just wanting to do it because she was just like, oh, well, fuck it. I don't believe it. it. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. I would have, I would have not gone in there for anything less than some cars, some, uh, some cold hard cash. That's cold what hard cash. Yeah. Um, cars, cars too. Cars too. Yeah. But um, she ends up, and I love how whenever she's like, like you know fuck it i'll do it and then isabella comes and she's like really um and so um she ends up going into the um what you call it into the hotel the hotel and <laughs> the- she's like i don't have to make out with it right i just and then max is like if you do i want to see the tape uh-huh. um but then she's just like okay so i just have to go down there touch clown on the nose and then come oh. back up right and Little they're poop. like yep yep mm-hmm and so she's like, all right, fun. Fuck it. So she starts to go into the hotel, goes in there. Um, we start to get in through it. And, and I mean, it's kind of fine for right now, although we are kind of getting like like the little glitching in the camera. And like, so it's like, oh, we know this is already starting to be like something's off. And then she ends up going into the heaven. And I love how she just like looks at one of the angels. and She's like. Razzmatazz. 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 Yeah. And I was, yeah. like, I was like, what? what? <laughs> I rewound it because I was like, what? <laughs> and I put the captions on. At that point, that's when I was like, why am I watching this with no captions? So I had to put captions on. And I was like, she did say Razzmatazz. I was like, what is the point? But okay. Yeah. It, it was works. really weird. It was just her character. And then she ends up, uh, after she says Razzmatazz and turns around, um, like, ten, two seconds later, we start hearing the piano. In the background, and she's like, "Wow, oh, that's weird." But yeah, she doesn't she's even like. She's like, "Stop it, guys! I know it's you." And mm-hmm. I was like, ooh, "Ooh, it's not the money." Yeah, she goes um, past the bar, um, and I think this is whenever she is in there, kind of stops for a little bit, and she turns the camera on herself and is filming herself. But obviously, she can't see the the monitor, little monitor thing, I guess. So um, she can't see all the people behind her. Yeah, all the ghosties. All, it was it was the Hell House crew. Yeah, yeah. It was definitely Alex and Mac. I saw them for sure. Yeah, and then I think Sarah was there mm-hmm. too. It was very like dark, but yeah. yes, they're behind her. And so she ends up then proceeding to go to the basement. Um, and she gets into the basement, which makes me think. Sorry, no, if time is just like one big. A like, lot of this movie gives cyclical of time works in a cycle yeah. as opposed to linear. Like, because at the end of the film, whenever they're like, let's all go to the bar and have a drink, mm-hmm. that maybe they were already well, but I guess the I was portal after. hasn't been closed yet. Yeah. But maybe they were just already there and that's where heaven is for them. Yeah. Who knows? Well, the movie also gave that it's not linear in time because of like when we even go to the end and we see like, you know, um, Russell had been in places where we guessed it and think that he was already. Yeah. And I guess even with Alex, I don't know. In the second one, how he went back to, we found out that he was already, had been at the Abaddon. And then that opens the thing, like uh, Casey mentioned, like, is he, was he there the was whole he, time? Yeah, there the whole time. Yeah. Never even left. Exactly. So maybe they're, they had already gone to the bar like they had at the end. Yeah. And that's why they were in there. And so they are, um, Oh, Lord. Yeah, she's uh, back to uh, Miss Jane. She's she's in the basement now and she is um, getting to the clowns. She so far, nothing's like too far off from now from or a miss. And so she goes down. She's like filming herself, turns it on herself. And the clowns should be we should mention that all of their heads are like facing forward. So yeah. it's like, you know, they're not moving. And so we have her, you know, look at the camera and be like, all right, this is for you boys. And then plants a big old kiss on the clown. Yeah, bonus, she mm-hmm. said. And I can't believe she kissed the clown. Yeah, that's gross. <laughs> it's just dirty. Nasty. And creepy. Scary. And then it, uh, as she pulls back, the camera then gets to show us that the big bad clown turned his head and is now facing her. And she notices immediately. 
I believe, right? Yeah, yeah. She has to notice that because, of course, she's like, oh, my God. And she kind of gets up slowly and then it turns its head as, as she's like getting up. Her, its head is following her. Yeah. Pretty which scary. is just terrifying. And she's just kind of like moving slowly and like coming to like a hyperventilation, but like in a slow like way that she like gets to the steps of the bottom of the basement, but then like proceeds to not go up out the basement. Yeah. She turns around, realizes just... now that the clown is standing up behind yeah. her. Yeah. So she freaks out and screams a blood curdling scream and then tries to get up the basement steps, but ends up just like freaking out on the steps instead. Yeah. And is just like losing. Losing her mind, and I was like, "Bitch, run get up, run!" She was definitely run. What are you doing? Oh. It wasn't flight or fight; it was freeze. Yeah, she froze, mm-hmm. and um, ooh, it was so scary for yeah. her. And then I thought she was dead, honestly, yeah. but apparently not because the boys start to come in, and they're like, and she's like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" And they're like, "What's up?" And then it cuts to the next day because Russell was pissed off that she didn't listen to anybody. Sorry. She didn't listen to anybody. Um, and he's like, where is she now? And all that. And they're like, well, she didn't show up to set today. So Russell's big plan to fix everything is just to double her pay to bring yep. her back. And then so she doesn't say anything. Gaslight the rest of the crew into yeah. saying it was just a prank. Yeah. Um, Even though nobody's fa- like everybody knows it wasn't them. Yeah. Because yeah. Jeff was like, I looked at her camera. And oh, she's yeah. not lying. Oh, yeah. And then it's the way that even um, later on, though, uh, was it Max and Greg are talking how like, oh, it could have been you. You weren't we weren't together the whole time or something. Were we together the whole time? I don't know. It was like a little joke about that or something. Like yeah. That. And Max definitely says, well, I know for sure it wasn't me. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I know I didn't do it. And so this is whenever, um, yeah, like they're basically, you know, no one can know about this. They're keeping it hush hush. Um, and so at this point, we even, I think, get a few more um, interviews from some of the other actors about how, like, they won't leave because the pay is so good. Um, and then it goes to we're talking about uh, Russell Wynn and um, we're talking about his car accident, right? His car crash. Did I skip? I don't know. I might oh. have just not written that part down. Oh, okay. Because my next note is that we're doing Isabel. We're doing makeup. The makeup, with yeah. Right before that, Isabel with the makeup. Um, we got to learn that he, uh, Russell Wynn, was in that car accident in two thousand and eight, and he was lucky to be alive. Mm-hmm. And that, but ever since then, something in him has changed. Like he's not the same Russell, essentially. Yeah. And I think the person oh, who was he talking has major head trauma. Yeah. And Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it was Max. Yeah. Someone was bringing it up. Um, But then we cut to the makeup with Isabel. um, And I, uh, this is the part where we were talking about how Max and uh, Greg were talking, uh, having that little banter between them. And then something for some reason, I don't know why um, Greg is the one who's like, I'm going to poop my panties or something like that. Yeah. (laughs) Something like that. I was like, what? Okay. But is this at this point after doing makeup um, and the actors leave Isabel, um, uh, walks out into the hall. Or she gets beckoned out. Something happens to where she walks out, and in the like ho- the hell hall, she sees Sarah. Yeah, mm-hmm. the boys walk back inside, mm-hmm. and then um, she's like on the thing with the walkie-talkie with Harvey, and he's like, "Send them back down my way." Stuff so once you turn them from drab to fab, mm-hmm. and then so she's I think just I think she's just walking back inside, mm-hmm. and she gets down to the hallway, and uh, she sees Sarah Havel staring in front, standing in front of two C, just looking inside, and then Sarah turns her head and beckons her towards the doorway and so she goes and is like what the hell and then she yeah. looks inside to see and there's just this sheet like sheet ghost <laughs> mm-hmm. kind of thing figure sitting on the um bed and uh then she's like jane yeah thinking it's jane playing a joke on her um but it's not jane tis not jane because then she gets locked in there with Sarah, the door slams shut, and then the sheet is gone. And then, yeah, disappears. she yeah. sees, we get a flash of, like, Sarah in the corner. And then Sarah's, like, right up in her face and is like, rah. And she doesn't <laughs> actually say rah. Yeah. But <laughs> it's very much like that, though. Yeah. Um, and obviously, Isabel is freaked out. Um, and then that's whenever we have um, the next day, I believe, Harvey, Jeff, and Russell are talking about it. Um, right? Kind of in the same way that um, they were talking about Jane. But this time, Isabel is not coming back 
because she does not, she's not taking the double money. She's like, yeah, out of here. She's does not, does not stay. And this whole time, Harvey's like kind of spitting facts because they're like, well, we can just spin it as Isabel was tired and stuff. And he's like, I've known Isabel for years. Yeah. Like, there's no way we can just say that she was too tired to do a gig kind of thing. And he's like, Hell House didn't listen to the warning signs, and now we aren't either. Mm-hmm. He's like, maybe we should really shut this thing down. Yep. And everyone else is like, absolutely the fuck not. Yep. Um, but Harvey was the only one speaking since at yeah. this moment. And then that's whenever they get interrupted by Vanessa, and she's like, hey, um, sorry, like I know this is kind of uh, important, but by the way, we have Isabel's camera, and someone... Or some for some reason the uh, memory card is missing from it. Do y'all know like what happened to it? Do yeah, where's you know, the footage? Yeah, it so. was so like random. Yeah, and I was like, girl, maybe not the time, time and place. Yeah, but <laughs> but I mean, I do. I mean, they probably don't want that footage yeah. to get out. They took it out. So yeah. they... it's very heavily implied that yeah. like it was like we took it because then they don't like answer, um, uh, at really, um, and it. They're just like, well, we don't know. We'll have to get on top of that, basically. That's what Russell says or something. Like, oh, wow. Like, we'll just have to find that, I guess. Yeah. Um, and then um, that's whenever we cut to our uh, cameraman. Uh, what was this, Lionel? Louis. Louis. <laughs> Louis, yes. Louis. What a name. Louis. Um, he went to go get some shit because he needs to fix his camera or something like that. Right? Yeah. And he leaves Vanessa in the oh, room. Oh, well, first we see pictures. We see Isabel's Instagram. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And we... Um, we learned that she was posting pictures and that in these pictures that, like, for some reason she didn't notice, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> that before she posted them. I was, like, I was a little confused about that. The one with Mac. Yeah. I was like, okay, I could see that. Uh-huh. Um, like her not noticing that one. Yeah. But the one with Tony down there at the base of the basement, I would have been like, who the fuck is this? In my picture. Yeah. Yeah. And then the one in the attic with Alex hanging in the background, I was like, what? What? Especially if someone's hanging. How do you not notice this? Yeah. Maybe she just thought they were props. Maybe. Yeah. It could be. Um, and then she, yeah, we see that they were in the picture. So it's very, very strange business happening. Um, but after that, we have them, uh, Louie going to get something and leaving Vanessa by herself. And she ends up, um, getting, hearing something and she grabs the camera that Louie usually films with and goes into heaven, the heaven area. And yeah. that's whenever she ends up seeing Jessica. I believe. Yeah. She finds Jessica in the corner. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like it really kind of leads you up. We're going through heaven and stuff because we're sitting there and you're ex- kind of expecting something to pop up in the yeah. hallway behind her as the camera's just kind of sitting on her. But then we see the lights for heaven turn on and this mm-hmm. like ethereal music start playing. And then she's walking back through heaven and it just kind of like going. You're kind of expecting something around to every corner. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, ooh, something's leading her over there. And then you get all the way to the other side. And then, yeah, back behind, like, another half wall or something is Jessica standing there. But, of course, the zoom lens was broken on the camera. So um, that's what Louie was going to go fix. Yeah. And so we can't actually, like, really see Jessica. But you can infer that it's Jessica. Yeah. Because they kind of, like, flashed to Jessica at the police station. Yeah. A lot stuff. of this movie has flashes, by the way, throughout, like, of, like, previous movies yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I think they happen really you could fast. almost watch three as a standalone. Because it gives you, it, it informs you of all the prior things that happened because it either shows you um, clips from the actual movies or has someone talking about it in a narrative type of way or like the interview with it the does other such dude. a good job of circling back and giving you like a brief recap of what mm-hmm. happened in the previous films that i think yeah you could just watch it yeah. almost by itself mm-hmm. and be chill i agree um but um, yeah. yeah we find jessica in the corner and then we flash to jeff russell and louie and 
Vanessa all talking and Jeff is kind of like savage as fuck. He's like, our sets are not malfunctioning. She is. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, that's rude. Yeah. Rude as hell. They're kind of they're gaslighting her, being a dick to her. And into forgetting the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Cause then she's like basically like, Well, I don't know what I saw. Like And I love how even Louis is like, No, don't let them like gas like don't, don't let, let them, them bully, bully you, you into feeling like you didn't see something. She's just like, No, it's fine. I I'm gonna stay. Yeah. I'm going to stay. Yeah. Which is not a great idea. But um she ends up then this is where we end up getting um what's the beard man name? What's his name? I forget his name, but Beardman is Robert Lyons. Robert Lyons is talking about um, more people who went missing. Um, I believe about the people who went missing. I just remember that he was. I saw him at this point talking about that. Um, and then Vanessa, we cut to Vanessa, who is trying to show Russell the video of, I guess, what she saw with Jessica. But he's like refusing to even like look at it or cooperate or like. Kind oh, of, when they go to his hotel? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah. mm -hmm. yeah, basically she's like, I want to go see him right now. Because mm -hmm. Louis was like, you want to talk to him tomorrow? And she was like, no, now. bitch, we're going now. Yeah. And so they go to his hotel and um Because she can actually prove him. what she sees, what she yeah. saw. Yeah. And she's like, we need to, like, you, we need to, like. You need to let your staff know, they're in let them know what they're getting into, kind of thing. And he's like, "I'll hear none of this," mm -hmm. and shoots her in the head. The room. Shoots her right dead, <laughs> and that's the end of the movie. Yeah. Goodbye. <laughs> um, and then that's whenever we do. I think it's what the next day or something, and we're with Harvey, and we're starting to do a light test. Yeah, uh -huh. it's September twenty sixth now, so mm -hmm. we're just a few days out from opening. Um. Opening day. Yeah. But yeah, Harvey's doing a light test in Paul's room, which I, I'm assuming it was Paul's room. Yeah, it looked, it looked like Paul's like room. Um, and every time he's like, okay, go full dark. And so all the lights turn off. And then he's like, okay, desk lamp kind of thing. And then it turns on the lamp. And then all of a sudden someone's sitting in the chair behind him. And mm -hmm. you're like, oh, freaky. Not again. Yeah. Someone's coming to get him. And then he's like, okay full dark and then it goes dark again and then it's the red lamp mm -hmm. and the red lamp turns on and now she's standing yeah and then you can see her kind of inching slowly towards him as they then turn off the lights again and then you his face is illuminated just because he has the camera on him yeah so you can see his face and then all of a sudden you just see these little like fingers creep up around his neck mm -hmm. it was so creepy and, he, and then just touch his neck and, and he definitely like, feels it and he's yeah. like what the fuck he's like, lights up lights up yeah and he's kind of looking around and i love how fast he's to be like oh my god oh my god but then be like oh, i guess it was nothing yeah uh, like, let's do it again let's run it again you guys yeah yeah and i was like no something just touched you yeah that's so scary and so harvey dismisses it and then we start to do the test again um and then after this we go to um i believe gregory mr gregory um talking to some fan or someone at the hotel right yeah mm -hmm. we're rounding the corner with mm -hmm. jeff and mm -hmm. i believe harvey and they're or, overhearing yeah or louie maybe it was louie cameraman yeah and um jeff for sure is there yeah and we're rounding the corner and they're about to turn the corner whenever they hear Gregory talking. And so they're just kind of like, I think at first they're kind of like, oh, he's got a fan. Like, mm -hmm. mm, let's just hear this out mm -hmm. kind of thing. Um, and we hear Gregory talking with this individual and she's just like saying She's he, praising him, basically. Yeah, like, oh, good job. Like, oh, I love the confidence mm -hmm. kind of thing. And then he was like, yeah, I just can't wait to get back to the city. And she was like, oh, silly. You're, you're never, never leaving here. Mm -hmm. And he was like, what? <laughs> and then she's like, you're all going to hell. Yeah. Um, and then that's whenever, because Jeff is over eavesdropping, he's like, this is weird. Let me go in and save my buddy. And he's just like, hey, hey, what's up? Greg, and then as Greg like turns around and they turn back to look at the table, nobody's there. Nobody's there, but he's saying that she had somewhat dirty blondish hair with a gray t-shirt and jeans, and they're saying that it sounded like Sarah. Sarah. Sarah Hovel. Har Sarah Harvel. Hovel. Yeah. Hovel. And so he's like, what? And they're like, yeah. And they're like, what? And so it's a little weird. And then that's whenever we cut to uh, Russell and 
oh, this is where we're talking about Russell and Alex, kind of kind of comparing and contrasting them both together. Yeah, Vanessa's saying mm -hmm. they're both the, a bunch of enablers around them, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. but the comparison stopped because Russell knew what was coming opening night, mm -hmm. and Alex had no idea. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe Russell Alex guy, did have maybe, an idea. I feel like he did. Yeah. yeah. But very much it's giving so that like Russell deliberately knows what he's getting everybody into. And at this point in the film, if you can't really you're also like not really knowing exactly what Russell's motives are at this point, because it's like, is he good? Is he bad? I don't know. What does he want? Yeah. Because you're just kind of like, huh, because it, it gives Alex in a way, but also not Alex in a way. Yeah. You know, from the first movie, because we understood Alex's motives in the first movie and this one we well, not in a we understood Alex's motives to an extent. We knew like, well, because it's his business and we wanted to work, he wants it to work out, right? Obviously. But in the second one, we obviously learned he needed it to work out because of financial instability. But in this one, like we don't necessarily like what Russell went is just some rich dude and he just wants to put on a good show. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It feels like there's obviously he's got a second agenda under there, especially what we've been learning about. So like with that thing about the banks and stuff earlier, it's kind of foreshadowing stuff that's about to happen. Um, and so um, at this point, we are um, with the whole cast and crew. They're at a bar for dinner, right? Um, trying to get some grubs, some drinks, kind of like a bonding time, which we have in every film, essentially. And it's the same old bar that Jessica yeah. and her crew went to, right? Yes. Yeah. And it's now September 30th. So mm -hmm. it's one day before opening night. Um, and Russell ends up showing late to this dinner. Yeah, of mm -hmm. course, fashionably late. Mm -hmm. And he comes up and, you know, they're all just kind of shooting the shit. And he's like, you know, wanting to get dinner and stuff. But then they're like, sorry, our kitchen closed at 1030. Mm -hmm. And he's like, OK, I'll just take a really pretentious wine. And <laughs> then and uh, I was like, sir, rolls. you're in a dive bar. For real. Um, he's like, the dude's like, I don't think I have any Le Chateau anything, but uh, I got the Pinot Blanc. Noir. Yeah, he's like, I've got oh, the Win Merlot. And mm. he was like, no, way too overpriced, <laughs> which is his own wine. Yeah. And then then they're like, he's like, I'll just take the house red. Mm -hmm. um, but they're sitting there. Vanessa starts to kind of interview him, like, about what he thinks it's going to be like. Yeah. And he's like, and then he says the line, you know, because she's like, oh, you're out here amongst the people and stuff. And he's like, yeah, yeah. I got to spend some time. With my crew, because after tomorrow, it's going to be hell. Yeah. And I was like. <gasps> Very foreshadowing. Dun, dun, dun. And then um, he ends up, you know, eating his. He, he asks for the rolls and stuff, and it comes out with the wine. And that's whenever everybody, everybody starts eating his, his rolls and, and stuff. And I, it's not my. Um, no credit to me whatsoever, but um, and like, you know looking up stuff for the movies and stuff, a lot of people pointed out that this was a direct reference to, like, Jesus and breaking wine and breaking bread with his disciples. Um, and that's what it was supposed to be a reference to. Yeah. It's because he's, you know, like an angel, uh, you know, in a sense. And so he was breaking bread with his disciples. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. And um, he all saves. Yeah, exactly. He saves them all because they all die. But mm -hmm. but he sacrifices himself. But he, yeah, and then mm -hmm. saves their souls yeah. and saves them from being stuck in the hotel. For forever. Wow. Mm -hmm. Now we all play, pray to Russell. For real. And so we have uh, her, Van, uh, Vanessa was mentioning how all the, they're sold out for the first week. And that's, he's like, yeah, it's really great. Um, and then that's when he brings up like, you know, actually, um, I have an idea. I, I really think for the opening and like, you know, I think y'all should leave. I don't think y'all should actually be here for the opening. And, and she's like, what? what? Like, we've been filming everything. Why would we not then stop at like not yeah, he gave opening. us yeah. full access. Like, mm -hmm. we want to be there for that. And he was like, you could just film the dress rehearsal and get the same idea. And she was like, no, like, I want to be there for that. Yeah. Um, And then basically at that point, he kind of gets up and he's like, no, you should come a different night. Yeah. And then he gets up. To leave. Yeah. But, uh, like, uh, you know, he's barely halfway out the building and she gets up to go chase after him. And she's like, you know, Russell, stop. And she gets to him and she's able to, like, whisper something in his ear. But then he looks at her and she, no, I'm sorry, reverse. She's, like, trying to, you know, be like, why? Like, what's going on? And he whispers something in her ear and she's just yeah. kind of left there and then looks at the camera like, uh, yeah. yeah, we don't know what he even told her. No, no clue. But mm -hmm. it gave her the idea to go talk to Father Paulus again. Yes. Mm -hmm. So she is 
they're going to talk to Father Paulus. Louis asking her like, "What the hell's going on?" And she's like, not answering at yeah. all. And um, basically, Father Paulus rolls up, and they're like, "Hey, are you receiving money from um, Russell?" And he's like, "Yes." Basically, she tells him that it's off the record, mm-hmm. and puts the the camera down and then they're like talking about the portal to hell basically talking about and we get to see his feet the whole time feet and legs yeah (laughs) um and yeah he's talking about the portal to hell and he she he is telling her how ruskell asked him to after the you know opening night get all of his to liquidate all of his money and to give it all to charities. Yeah, to suitable charities. And Paulus also says that Russell's carrying a large burden. Mm-hmm. Um, so hinting that Russell's possibly doing something that's bigger than himself, mm-hmm. just like Jesus was. Yes. Um, and so turns out it wasn't off the record because the bitch drops the story the next day. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, trying to get insomnia shut down or mm-hmm. get the crew freaked out enough to be like, why is he liquidating all of his assets and be like, are we, and once the story drops, they're like, are we still getting paid? Like what's going on? They're rightly freaking out. Yeah. Um, and, and that's whenever Jeff is like, you know what guys, like whatever Russell's doing has nothing to do with like the production money company. And like, you were all getting paid. Like, don't worry. Yeah, but Jeff runs upstairs and is mm-hmm. like, what, what the, the fuck, fuck is going on, Russell? Mm-hmm. And he's like, it doesn't concern you. And he's mm-hmm. like, bitch, I'm the COO. Mm-hmm. This does concern me. And I was like, it does concern him. Yeah. That's true. It does. Um, But then they're basically fighting about that. And yeah. um, this is where we then f- flash back to the footage of the Hell House crew having the news broke to them that not broke to them, but like proposing the idea of having Hell House at the Abaddon Hotel outside of the city. And as they're going to leave the restaurant, it's the same footage we got at the end of two. Uh Um, As they're going to leave the restaurant, we pass a booth and who's sitting there? Russell Wynn. Russell Wynn is sitting there the whole time. And then we flash to Jessica and Molly sitting in some other little diner thing. And then as they get up to leave, Russell Russell's passes them on the way in. Yeah. And so Russell's been there the whole time, like throughout all of this, which is pretty the, wild. The opposite, the other Tully, like, you know how Tully's orchestrating everything and pulling strings on one end. That's what Russell's doing on the other end, apparently. Yeah. Um, And so he's kind of been here throughout the whole time. Also, um, right before the unseen footage was shown, I love how whenever Vanessa and Russell were the last people in the room, um, when they were like, you know, she was getting them, trying to get them shut down. He like puts stand and he's like, nice, nice try. try. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, we it's now opening night. Um, they are, we have Russell, you know, like it's, uh, at the beginning, like, you know, hi, welcome everybody. It's, you know, come to Insania and giving his whole spiel. And that's when Battle we, our innermost demons. Mm-hmm. And that's when we have everybody going through with the mask on, um, like, uh, what's it called? Like, um, Masquerade party, basically. Yeah, like they've just like got a mask. all little white masks, mm-hmm. like you're the blue man group, but with a white yeah. mask. Yeah. Um, and so then that's whenever they're going through it. Um, um, it's pretty much like a like a walkthrough play. You're just watching Faust and this whole thing go on. As with they walk throughout the building. Yeah. Uh-huh. And then at a certain point, they enter into this like. I forget this like place where you have to come around the corner and the clown pops up. Big Daddy Clown Boss pops up out of nowhere and freaks everybody the fuck out. Um, and I believe even because we're following through the perspective of POV of Vanessa, right? Yeah. And and uh, her Louis, the cameraman. And I think even them are like, this. that's not a, like, what the fuck? Yeah, what is that? That's not doing a, there. That's not supposed to be here. Yeah. Um, and so then they end up going through there. And that's whenever. um. <sighs> I think we have, uh, what's his name, is looking at the cameras. Is it Harvey? Yeah, Harvey's mm-hmm. up there with some other woman who we yeah. never really get introduced to, um, and Jeff. And they're mm-hmm. like, someone's in 2C. Mm-hmm. And they look on the cameras, and Andrew Tully, who we know to be Andrew Tully, they, they don't, don't know yeah. it's Andrew Tully. Um, Andrew Tully is like flashing up on the screen mm-hmm. and kind of glitching in and out. 
Um, and then basically we follow, then we kind of cut to Russell going up into 2C himself. Yes. Um, and go check it out. Russell goes in there and then sees, ends up seeing Tully. Yeah. yeah. And is like, who hired you? And then Russell, basically Tully's like saying that Russell's role is complete and that we will all enter the lake of fire together. The beast time has come at last mm -hmm. is what he says. Um, and I'm assuming Russell's probably like, the fuck? Yeah. But, but also, also probably this. like. He's definitely, I think, playing dumb I at knew. this point. Yeah. He's like playing dumb, like in a way where like, I, I know what I'm here for, but don't necessarily know all the facts, but you just kind of confirmed what I needed to know. And I guess I'm supposed to take you down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're the bad guy. Yeah. Um, you're the person I've been waiting for. Yeah, basically. Yeah. And so then that's whenever. Um, and he's also playing into Tully because Tully at this point believes that everything's going according to plan. Like this, Russell was supposed to bring everybody and now we're all, you know, this is it. This all is these the souls are going to go into the lake been, of fire. So many more for. people. Yeah. And so this is whenever we have um, then Tully going out into the main audience area because uh, Max and Greg are still giving their big, you know, um, dialogue and act going on but then <laughs> Tully just comes out and interrupts it yeah um and there and i love how max was very like oh who are you, who are you? yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. and then gregory immediately was like who are you god damn it like mm -hmm. you're messing up my show mm -hmm. kind of thing because we know that he's the one who's very full Super of serious. his yeah his work mm -hmm. um and He's then Tully's like, there is no God here or God is not here. Yeah. He's like, I don't bargain or something like that. Um, and then that's whenever um, we have. Uh, oh, hello. We have uh, then Tully grabbing Greg's eyes <laughs> and head and gouging them just, out. Just a good little squish. And everybody just it breaks out into pandemonium. We are freaking out. Um, everyone is like, what the hell? Um, and that's whenever we have, um, you know, basically uh, all the cult people coming out in robes and starting to murder everybody in the building. Um, and we have Vanessa make her way to the bar area where I believe she's hiding on the other side of it. But there's like a, they, they left the camera there. And so it's just kind of doing this it's thing. It's going it's on the around. Lazy Susan. That's what it is. OK. That they asked Max to turn off at the beginning of the at the beginning of the oh, thing because okay. yeah. it's causing too much noise. That's true. But it's like a mechanical lazy Susan. And so we're seeing everything kind of from the perspective of us just watching basically people getting murdered um, and sacrificed, I guess. Yep. The gates open. All the hooded figures swarm in the place. There, Some people make it out, but the hooded figures get out too. Basically, it's a massacre inside the bar. We watch like people get their throats slit. We're watching just one other one like inches mm -hmm. way down the abdominal area of some person. Yeah. And then you're watching like people outside get yanked out of their yeah. cars and stuff. So like they made it out of the building, but they're not safe. Yeah. And stuff, At this which point, was wild. The lake of fire is firing on all cylinders. You yeah. Know, it's, ba it's basically, you know, what we were told that this would be a, a hell on earth, essentially, is the opening. Um, and so, you know, uh, this is all happening. It's super crazy. We have then um, Vanessa. Uh, she's getting out from under the neat the bar and she's trying to, you know, escape. But as she's getting out, we see that Tully is there, but then he flashes away from nice behind time. her. She doesn't see that. And so as she's going for some reason, um, she decides. And while, hold on. Uh -huh. Sorry. While she's going up there, and Damn. like while she's getting out from the bar and mm -hmm. stuff, we flash, flash to Russell getting something out of the safe. Yeah. You can assume it was what Father Paulus sent him in the beginning of the film. Mm -hmm. At least that's what I assumed. Yeah, I'm assuming. Um, but we see Russell getting something from the safe and going back downstairs. Mm -hmm. um, but then, yeah, we see her. Getting making no way downtown. Yeah, I almost said that yeah. last. You said that. I almost said it last episode. Yeah, because um, you said that they but, were making their way down to the basement. Uh, yeah, and it made yeah. me think of that. And so she does make her way down to the basement. Unfortunately, um, I guess there's not really. Many we also options. see Jane get dragged off screen. Oh yeah, too. we do. Yeah. So we watch Jane die, and but then yeah, she's like looking at the basement, and then the. Um, 
basically Vanessa gets dragged down by one of the hooded figures. Yeah. And then they like slit her throat or mm-hmm. something they right pin her there. Up against the wall and she gets her throat or something slit. Right in front of Tully. Yeah. And then basically some, we, someone that we can't really see comes on screen and Tully's like, who are you? Mm-hmm. Kind of thing. And is um, asking to and basically is like, you can't do anything. Like no the lake man. of fire is open. Yeah. yeah. And um, but then we see that it's Russell. Uh-huh. Come on, comes on screen and they start fighting each other and the lake of fire opens or like the f- ground splits and yeah. hell is coming out of the floor. And it's very quick. It happens so fast. But, you know, in their little arm tussle, um, the whole building starts to collapse in on itself with them inside of it. And um, as soon as that happens, it's just kind of like we cut to um, news footage of like, you know, the Abaddon Hotel um, and their coverage of how it caught fire. And it's... Uh, but all staff and crew were found yeah. safely in the cornfields behind the hotel. Mm-hmm. And Jeff, then we flash to Jeff and um, Vanessa sitting there, like kind of going through the rubble. And mm-hmm. um, and very aware of like what had happened. Yeah, because mm-hmm. Jeff's like, well, we, Jeff's like, I don't know what happened. And he was like, I thought I was dead. And then she was like, well, we did die, but Russell brought us back. Yeah, And um, then... Then we flash to an interview of them explaining that Russell essentially died twice and was legally dead for two minutes before during the car accident. Like they almost called plug, pulled Mm -hmm. the plug and stuff because he was legally dead. Um, So but essentially he's gone to the other side. Mm -hmm. And so then he must have been tasked with this or something from the other side. Um, And then she finds Vanessa finds a picture of the original Hell House crew. The uh, yeah, picture that's on the original film, mm-hmm. which was cool. And I was like, that yeah. picture is remarkably unburnt for, for being <laughs> this fire right? and uh, rubble. And um, it's a good little nod to them. And then that's whenever we have, um, after all of that, and I guess, you know, happily ever after everyone's still alive, we cut to um, our Hell House LLC gang uh, back in the house. And they kind of like pop up and they're like, and this is like during like the credits kind of sequence. And someone in a way. said, I don't know who it was. Maybe it was Father Paulus said, "No man can close the gateway. It would take an angel from God Himself." Yeah, yeah, I have that kind of thing. Too. Yeah, yeah, but Just I'm not up, sure like, who said it. I'm not sure either, honestly. It was probably Father Paulus because I don't know who else would have. Yeah, that would that would make the most sense, um, I guess. And then in the credits and kind of like coming back to screen, we see our gang, and they're like, "Oh my God, we're we're back!" Like. We're no. alive. Yeah. I was like, oh, yay. Whenever we flash to Paul's crotch. <laughs> yeah. And he kind of comes back up. That's right. I, I, was I was like, like that I was like, oh, good. They're alive again. I was like, what? So everyone who's died in the hotel has been like rectified. Like they're all getting to come. All of their free. death is being reversed. And boy, but were we played. We were because shortly thereafter, Russell. Uh, Russell walks in and they're trying to leave. And mm-hmm. he's like, none of you can leave. You died in the hotel. Like the whole hotel took your like soul kind of thing. Yeah. And um, but essentially, I think it's basically time for them to move on. Yeah. It's almost like they were in a limbo or purgatory in a way. Yeah. And he's like, well, now you're able to be free. So now you can just move now on. Now your soul can pass mm-hmm. on, but you're not alive again. So you're not allowed yeah. to leave. Um, and he explains that he's the one who closed the gateway and that y'all were the ones who helped open it Mm -hmm. and tells them basically that, you know, it's time to move on to other things now instead of Mm -hmm. being there. And then, then basically I think Paul's like, well, shit, should we just go see if the bar's still open? Mm -hmm. And Tony's like, let's do yeah. And then they all start slowly walking off to the bar. We get Alex and bracing Sarah mm-hmm. and crying because, well, they're dead and he's yeah. killed them all. Mm-hmm. Um, it's his fault. <laughs> yeah. And then it ends with them all walking off towards the bar area. Into the sunset. Into the very unhappy sunset. <laughs> and that's the end of Hell House LLC, The Lake of Fire. Dum, 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 dum. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, the third film, third entry in the trilogy, the... Um, Did you see this? Mm-mm-mm. And it totally apparently said... Um, Meet your interview next week. 
Yes, he's sick. Look forward to having your soul. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. I love it. I love that he's so in character. I won't be able to go to that. Neither will you. I was like, this is this is everybody? Or is this just me, you, and Tully, and Mike? It's like, that's not Casey, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay, got it. But anyways, sorry, we got text messages about the interview with Tully, um, which is exciting. But um, yeah, anyways, that is 2019's Hell House 3, The Lake of Fire. Next Tuesday, the 28th. Gotcha. Okay. I was like, when what? Okay. Um, Lake of Fire, yes. Um, we'll get into the boo rating. Um overall, I would say I'd probably give this one a, a lower rating than one and two, just because it didn't necessarily give me the hype that one and two had. It was also done in a different style, almost um, not style, but I, I think there was definitely more of like um like the interviews with the cast and stuff were a little bit less found footagey than yeah. the other two films were. I would de- most definitely say, um, and I think that overall, because probably of pre- uh, budgets or I don't know, it was the short shorter, uh, I believe, film in all of the entries so far, and so it kind of seemed a little bit rushed when we got towards the climax of the film, especially the fight between Tully and Russell. It was a bit kind of fast for me, especially when the whole series we've been building up, like, you know, how big of a baddie Tolly is and like all of that. But I, it, it didn't doesn't mean that it necessarily uh, it still conveyed like its story and what it wanted to get across, like and what was supposed to happen, I guess. Yeah. And how Russell, you know, defeated Tolly and saved the day and like yada, yada. It took a divine intervention. Um, but uh, overall, I think some of the acting like on the actors parts not the best um like who like i'm just being more like jane and greg i guess i feel like on some parts and even isabel um even though they were super minor roles i guess because they were so minor it almost felt like um see their acting didn't bother me no no yeah it, it bothered, well, we all know that i was bothered by, by molly, molly in the last yeah. film i think they're but acting at, i think they're acting so. at times kind of bothered me more a little bit than even molly and jessica's um, at times but overall like it was still a good story um i thought that it was a creative way to like keep it going and have this russell win come in which if you think about it, it's kind of like it was almost like who's this guy it's unrelated that kind of seems out of left field but then they were able to somehow give us like a no this is how he's connected and because of this and he's you know an angel but um overall i would say i'd give it four a four or out of the three, out of the 4.5 and the almost five that the other one's got. Yeah. Yes, yeah. A four is about where I was sitting as well. Mm-hmm. I think it was a, I think it was really necessary mm-hmm. for it to be a part of this trilogy. Mm-hmm. And I thought it did a really wonderful job of capping off the trilogy and kind of ending Hell House mm-hmm. or ending the Abaddon Hotel so that way we could move on to the Carmichael Manor yeah, and explore that planet, as mm-hmm. Mike would say. Um, so I think it did a great job of really rounding out this story. And it did feel a tad rush towards the end, mm-hmm. which I said the original, the ending felt rushed too well. to me. Um, but I still think it did a good job of explaining everything away. And Mm-hmm. Russell's character and like his role and everything and why he was so important during the third film really came into play in the last like literal two minutes, mm-hmm. um, which was pretty cool. I like when a film will wait to the last second to tell you kind of everything yeah. if it's not if it's even going to tell you everything. Um, so I, I thought it did a great job with that. It did feel much less found footage. You're right. It was mm-hmm. much more documentary style. Yeah. Um, but I, I still enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. I, I thought that was really cool. And I think it leads way to like what we were talking about earlier for it to move forward to something that maybe is a little less found footage yeah. and to be an actual full fledged production. Yeah. yeah. Traditional film. Which I would be I would be fine. Yeah. I We all know that I love found footage. Um, it's one of my favorite horror genres. But 
I think I would be completely fine if Cognetti needed to step away from found footage mm-hmm. to make a more full fledged production. Yeah. Um, I think that would be really cool and I would be super happy for him if he was able to do that. Mm-hmm. So I agree. Um, yeah, I think an overall four from me. I none of the acting bothered me. I just the story itself, I still really liked it. I just wasn't as intrigued as I was in the other two films um, until mm-hmm. the last little bit where I was like, oh, shit, what is going on? Like, what is Russell's role in all this kind of thing? And really? then it really getting explained to you. And then I was like, oh, mm-hmm. that was cool. Yeah. I liked it. And maybe it's because one and two are very like they're more similar in their styles of the way they were shot and stuff. Yeah. That this does seem a bit of like a departure from the other two. But like you said, it's not bad. Yeah. Departure is good. It's a little bit of change. It's a little bit of the same, but a little bit of new. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Do you have any funny facts? I have one. One fun fact. The show Insomnia is based on a similar New York um, City performance art show called Sleep No More, wherein guests move about in mass watching a series of vignettes played out by the actors. Um, I don't know if I said that word right. Vignette? Isn't that like a shadow or something? Yeah. Vignette I know in a photograph. Isn't it that like that? That's what like makes yeah. the corners dark or white. So I don't know. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. Uh, yeah. But I don't know. Um, but the show even switches themes from year to year the same way the fictional Insomnia was set to debut a show based on the story Faust. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's pretty cool. That's the only fun fact that I have. Um, but yeah, a solid four for Hell House LLC 3, mm-hmm. The Lake of Fire. I thought it was a a fine film. Fine film. It was a great way to end a trilogy that we've been like working our way towards getting more information and having like a good solid finish to. That's yeah. I thought it I thought it went really well. Yeah. What happened? Have you given your boo base ratings? Yeah. We just, we just boo gave our boo ratings right now. Okay. I'm I apologize because I've been texting back and forth with um Brian David Tracy, the guy who played uh, Tully. Yes. Yeah. We saw, I loved how he was so in character. <laughs> yeah, he was very much in character, and that's what I wanted to say real quick. Um, so in texting back and forth with him, I said, uh, you know, thanks for agreeing to the interview. What would be a good time? You know, blah, blah, blah. I said, mm-hmm. by the way, it creeps me out a little bit that I'm texting Tully, right? Mm-hmm. And so he answers, and he tells me what time and all that stuff, and he said, And don't be creeped out. We still have the ability to text from the lake of fire, which I thought was fantastic. And so that's so fun. I agreed, you know, to the Zoom time and all that. He said, uh, look forward to having your soul. I mean, your interview. So that is so funny. Yeah. Yeah. We were laughing about that. It's fantastic. So I just thought I'd jump in once more and let you guys know that. Do you want to give us your boo rating? One to five? Um, Zero to five? So three, I would say probably a three and a half. Mm-hmm. And it's only because it's a um, uh, it's it's more diverse than the other two. Yeah, and so it changes the style a little bit. But I think it was needed. Yeah, literally. Yeah, that's our exactly whole conversation. what we just. Yeah, said. I think yeah. it's exactly what you guys were <laughs> yeah. saying. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Um, all right, but yeah, and that was mainly that's all I got. my drawback too. Was like, well, I guess in a way that numbers one, one and two were so much alike in style that yeah. this definitely feels like a departure. So it's almost like you have to like re, like you know, use like. It's like a new haircut, you yeah. know? You have to have a few days to kind of get used to it. How is the yeah. sun not making you blind? Oh, the whole time. Oh, the whole my time. God. I yeah. tried to close the blinds, like, but there are it's, none. It's like Caitlin the Archangel or yeah, something. It it's, is. Uh, your head is <laughs> lighting up. Yeah, that's rough. Yeah. I'm it's sorry, been gradually Josh. making its way lower and lower. <laughs> yeah, that's what the sun does. Yeah. Like, yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it I'm, goes up. I'm new at this. Yeah. I'm new at this. Um, but yeah, yeah, that is uh, Hell House LSC 3, The Lake of Fire, everybody. 2019. Look forward to us covering our the fourth film uh, by Mr. Stephen Cognetti, um, Origins, The Carmichael Manor. Yes, super and, excited to cover this film. It yeah. was really good yeah. when I watched it the first time. And so I'd be excited to watch it again with mm-hmm. the lens of our perspective notes and everything just real quick um i want to thank you guys for continuing to do this show Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Um, it's always fun when you guys come in. I enjoy talking about these movies with you. This and... is the moment Mike chooses to fire us. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, 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 no. And I, I just, I just want to say thanks for letting me rope myself into this oh, thing. Yeah. And also thanks to being open to helping me out with, with the new show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's been because fun. There, fun. there's nobody else in the network I would have chosen to, to do this kind of thing. Aww. Number one, cause you do horror movies, but number two, because I like you guys. So. Yeah. Aww. Thanks. There we you like go. You too, Mike. We All like right. You too. Three and a half. Three and a half and a solid <laughs> yeah, four from us. From the two boo bays. Yeah. So that makes it like a 3.8. 3.8 yeah, for yeah, pretty close. 2019's Hell House 3 Lake of Fire. And um, like we said, we're going to be covering the other ones. And then hopefully stay tuned to seeing the launch of Abaddon Eyes, everybody. Uh, giving a nice little um, perk in your ears up for that. And uh, the wonderful interviews we're going to be hopefully having with... Uh, all the characters and the actors who played them so fine and well. Yeah. yeah, Tully's kind of forcing my hand to get this thing out earlier there rather than later. Yeah. So, yeah. That's, I mean. Nice. I would say sometime in December. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. We're sitting in sure November, so sometime in December. Fun. Looking forward to it. That's exciting. Yeah, um, and then you'll hear at least our interview with Cognetti, but maybe possibly some of the other interviews on yeah, our feed as well. Yeah, absolutely. So that's exciting. But as always. The lovely, we are in the lovely Rogue Media Network Studio. Okay, they take great of care of, sun, of us. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can listen to our podcast and a lot of other podcasts on their uh, website called RogueMediaNetwork.com. That's right. And then you can listen to all of those podcasts on and our podcasts on a slew of podcasting platforms. The biggest two being Spotify and also Apple. But wherever you do listen, don't forget to rate, review, like, and subscribe. That's right, because that's the only way we can get ahead in this world. Mm-hmm. And tell word of mouth, tell your friends, tell, you know, we're all going to join the Lake of Fire together. So sure. tell your cult. Spread tell, the word, Bird. T- we'll tell Andrew Tully, and tell then he'll preacher. tell people yeah. too. Tell the congregation, please. Spread yeah. the word. Tell everyone at the fair. Tell <laughs> everyone that we have Cunty Communion. <laughs> yes, literally. Um, and then if you want to reach out to us, let us know your thoughts on Hell House and the world that they're building and whether or not you like this film. If you're, what was their name? Stale Yeast? <laughs> bakery yeast. Baker yeast. Baker yeast. Yes. Baker yeast. Yeah. <laughs> oh. That's for you too, Baker yeast. <laughs> Sorry, their review was stale. So sure. I thought. <laughs> Ooh. Good one. A little hot take there. That's good. Oh, we're Needed a little bit more time in the oven, <laughs> it sounds like. Oh. Nice job. Yeah. <laughs> They're going to come for us in our Ooh, reviews. Yeah, I'm ready to <laughs> stick and fork in that one. They're not. They, they don't leave the house. That's They're, true. Yeah, they're not going to. They're keyboard uh-huh. warriors, Caitlin. Yeah, but then they could come leave a nice review for us on our show. Yeah. And say that we're stale. That's okay. Do it. But um, I'll publicity. say we made it. Publicity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, you can do, you can reach out to us on our one social media platform, which is Instagram, and that is at Boo Bays Podcast. And that's at B O L B A E S because we're your Boo Bays, not your Boo Babes. That's right. And we'll <laughs> stay tuned for Hell House 4. Origins. Origins, the current Michael Manor. It's a mouthful, but it's a good mouthful. It is a long, yeah, long name, but worth you it. Gotta keep doing it's like a pop. good indie song. Yeah, after the whole, we're your boo bays, not your boo babes. Yeah, I like that. That's okay. a little signature thing you can start doing. Yeah. Okay. Do it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, because it's, it's like, it just works, because that's what it's like. That's what I feel like, because you got to like have the in there. Yeah. Like the boo babe, not where the boo babes, not your boo babes. See, okay. it just it just belongs there, yeah. From now on. Okay. Well, yeah. From the head honcho himself. All right, I think I've added enough. And to I this. think we're done too, you guys. So, so until uh, next time. Until next time, you guys. Bye, bays. Bye, bays. I don't know why I like to go. This has been a Rogue Media Network. Oh,